Do you like democracy? If you said yes to that question and you haven't bought the game yet, everyone else doing democracy has, so you're being undemocratic. So do the democratic thing and become a hell diver so we can spread democracy the only way we know how. What is it about this co-op horde shooter that sets itself apart from every other game of its type? And why is Helldivers 2 just so awesome? Well, let's jump into our hell pod and dive straight into this. Here we go, boys. When this game first released, I saw all of the hype for this game, but I basically ignored it because sci-fi shooters aren't generally my type of game. But my friends started banging on at me about how awesome it is and how democracy waits for no man, so I either needed to get on board or become a walking can of terminid food. So maybe we should start at the very beginning for all this. What is this game all about and why should I care? When you finally give in to Liberty and purchase the game, you're treated to your first propaganda video, and from that point on, the immersion in this game has got you and it doesn't let go. After the first propaganda video, you do your basic training, you're inducted into the Helldivers, you name your ship, and then you're welcome to the war. A war which isn't just your experience, but the experience of the entire player base, but we'll get to that bit later. There are no lobbies or menu trees required for you to actually play the game. You're just in it and that's that. The game never breaks immersion from the first point you load up. Even when you're deploying to the battlefield, you actually watch yourself and your team deploying from the ship. And when the music kicks in, it makes you want to punch the air and scream, Boy, super And herein lies my point. The game is first and foremost aimed at being fun. It makes a point to be overly patriotic and bordering on the cheesy, but it's counterbalanced by actually being kind of cool. Although the whole tongue-in-cheek, not taking itself too seriously type of dialogue is actually really infectious. I'm President Germany. Go over to the radar thing and let me know and I'll tell you where to go. Yeah. I got the terminal. Terminal's animated. Cover me. Mission action. The game draws you in. And on top of that, it's fun as hell and can be as challenging as you want it to be. If you enjoy taking it easy and popping alien skulls, you can do that. Or if you like a challenge and to earn the maximum XP that you can get, do the higher levels where the game just throws wave after wave of bugs at you while you just try to survive. And that's just the bug missions. The Terminator automatons are a bit smarter. They'll flank you. They've got guns, rockets, chainsaws, and all manner of sinister gear. They're actually a lot more menacing than the bugs, and you really feel like they're unstoppable machines. The whole thing is just so cinematic too, you can have some really epic moments with your squad. Have you picked up the machine gun on the floor? Sick! I did, yeah. That, I'm not gonna lie, that felt awful when you went come back and I just saw you both on a rock each, just <laughs> emptying your clips. <laughs> And on top of that, this isn't just a run and gun type of game, especially on the higher levels. You have to think about what you're going to encounter in that mission and bring the right gear. And then once you're in the game, you've got to think about how you're going to get from point A to point B. What you do on the battlefield matters, like saving your ammo for the objective or holding onto the most powerful stratagems for a time when you actually need it most. The game makes you think about this stuff, meaning it's more than just brainless running around shooting everything that crosses your path. Although you can do that if that's what you like to do. But there are tactics like choosing when to engage and using stealth if you find yourself alone, staring down a patrol. And I think the horde shooting community has been crying out for a game like this because you're certainly not getting it from COD Zombies, that's for sure. Speaking of community, Personally, I've never played a game where what you do in the game benefits or impedes the entire player base. And what I mean by that is, in this game, you and everyone else that plays this game are all working on a common goal to liberate the sectors on the galactic map. I've never played something like this before, and with this gigantic community effort puppeteered by Joel, our friendly neighbourhood dungeon master, you can help to liberate the galaxy, which creates this immense sense of community. Now, as the game is online, that means you're open to paying for cosmetics and battle passes, which this game does have, but these developers don't appear to be that greedy. 
As counterintuitive as this might sound for a gaming company that just wants to make money, they're mainly in this to make it a fun experience for the player. The proof of that is when the CEO told people not to buy the game just yet because they weren't expecting nor were they equipped to deal with such high player numbers, meaning you were probably going to see issues with loading the game if you did or when they didn't release new weapons and the exosuit until the community had liberated Teen Quan? Whatever. It's actually quite refreshing to see developers that realise that a fun and engaging experience for the player equals a great experience for the company. So if you make a game fun, players are going to buy into it. The battle pass and all cosmetics aren't rammed down your throat either, it's just there if you want it. But you do also have the free battle pass that you can grind for which includes outfits, weapons, emotes and the in-game currency. And that in-game currency can be used to buy the battle pass. So if you bought the game already and don't particularly want to spend any more on the battle pass, you can just unlock it for free. But problem is you do have to grind for it and it is a grind but it is truly a refreshing take on making video games in this modern era of corporate greed. What's also refreshing is the gameplay itself. At its core it's nothing new particularly, it's a 4 player third person co-op shooter, but every aspect of the game comes together to form an experience that's believable to the player. The gunplay has weight to it, where if you're using a heavier gun, the more unwieldy it is, or the heavier the armour you're wearing, the slower you're going to move around. The auditory and graphical spectacle of this game makes you feel immersed into a world where you and your team are fighting giant bugs and robots for the liberation of the people back home. It's all the detail that makes it all believable and draws you in. There's a lot of elements to this game that perfectly fit together to make it an engaging, addictive and entertaining experience for the player, even if you do die, a lot, because you will. This is the breath of fresh air players needed from the PvP competitive scene, and it may be a PvE game, but it's certainly not a game that doesn't require quick reflexes, sick aim or a lot of teamwork on the higher levels. If you want to escape with your life you've got to work together to get the job done because if you're going off on your own like an idiot, you could have the best accuracy in the world but you're going to get yourself into a pickle which makes life harder for your team, and that's just not democratic. Being in a team that works well together makes your experience of the game that much more engaging. Like when you're being chased by a bile titan with no way to take it out, but your team have got your back and pop it directly in the skull with a rocket. The sense of camaraderie in this game outmatches any competitive shooter, for me at least. And everyone including myself seems to have stories about how they survived some sort of impossible situation thanks to incredible teamwork and they're always fun to look back on in the comments, so let me hear your stories. All in all, above everything else, this game is just fun and the potential for more content, including the fact that we could be defending Super Earth at some point in a live event where the entire community have got to come together to defend Super Earth, that's a really intriguing prospect to me. I think live service works really well for a game like this, so it does make you wonder. Why do AAA studios struggle to keep their audience with their live service, but these developers are keeping people engaged at the moment with their minuscule budget in comparison to AAA? I think big things are in store for this game and I honestly can't wait to see where they go with it. Let me know what you think in the comments, but for now, democracy managed.